Where where'd you find he it? He was on the stern. He was on the fourth floor behind the couch back right there. Peter and Shirley, I assume, are out. I knocked on their door. Yeah, they're all out. Little bird is all out. Do you want to hold it? I don't mind holding it. I just want to make sure it looks so nice. Put it in a little box until box with a towel in. Where did you find it? He was on the stern on the fourth floor behind the couch. Oh, so is that on the deck on the deck? Yeah. Should we put him back on the deck and just wait and see if he stays or goes? Good morning. Oh, no, Peter collected two of those this morning. Morning. Oh, yes. He might yeah. have a box in so his cabin. So you might have one. Give him a call and ask him if he's got anything in his cabin. Yeah, there you go. I know he's got two in his cabin. Peter, Peter, then. So they found another bird on, on board. What do you <coughs> want us to do with it? I think you might have two more, right? Yeah, if you take it down to cabin 415, go into the toilet, open the shower door, and you'll see that there's two already in the shower. And I wonder if you could have that message on to June, my um, uh, cabin side, because he doesn't know that I've got birds in there. Okay, so do you want a third one in, or should we try and let him go? No, you might as well put him in there, because we'll let his eyes once we're away from the shore, um, because the girls will take them out if we don't go here. Roger that. Stick him in the shower. Four one five. Four one five. Down okay. at the end. I'll come down now. I just need to get a message from my toilet. Yeah. In the so, shower. Yes. Did you see already? <laughs> <laughs> you said I must warn you. <laughs> I'll come back, where's the sun? That side, so I'm going to go this side. These birds are able to find their way. They're able to find their way <laughs> using the stars. Notice where I'm holding it, very way, way down on its feet. It will calm down, folks. Um, and what we do, we literally turn the world upside down. We bring the moon and the stars down onto the ocean and they get confused. They're attracted by the bright lights and they come down on the deck. I heard many of you say but how small the bird is. And yes, you're looking at a member of the smallest group of seabirds in terms of size. Yesterday you saw the largest, you saw an albatross. Albatrosses can be 9, 10, 11 feet across. The storm petrels, I've measured this one, it's actually 41 centimeters from wingtip to wingtip. That's about what, 14 inches or something like that. And this is considered to be a relatively large storm petrel. It's in a genus we call Oceanodroma, which means it's got a very long arm. That's from the shoulder out to the elbow. So it's a very, very long arm, and this gives it a very long wing shape. For the bird watchers, you will know that they've got a divided rump. Not completely white, but a little dark strip down at the bottom. This is actually called a leech's storm petrel. And we're going to release this one now. Just as I just pass it around to you folks, just look at the nostril. And remember, these are tube-nosed birds. These are members of the Procellara formates. They have a tubular nostril, a little bit like yours and mine, two nostrils united with a middle septal division. And these birds, their brain, not very big, not much bigger than the size of a pea, but 37.5% of the brain is normally given over to the olfactory lobe. For the bird watchers, you can't count this if this is an unknown, unticked bird until it's actually free and flying. <laughs> Once it's away, you can actually do that. <laughs> Did he come back? Oh, there goes a ball. Oh, <laughs> 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 
That's what we have to be careful of. That's why we didn't release them immediately. Earlier on, we had lots and lots of gulls, and if I toss that out, 20, 30 gulls, they would be on it immediately, and they can swallow a storm petrel literally in the blink of an eye. So that's why we have to be careful. Where's the next box? Or the box. Okay, thank you. To give you an idea, this bird probably weighs about 20 grams, not much more than that. So this bird has got very short legs and it's got long wings. It's an Oceanodroma, a bird that actually, as a group, evolved in the northern hemisphere. The bird that I'm holding, the leeches storm petrel, is the only storm petrel in the world that nests both in the north and in the southern hemisphere. Just recently, these birds have been discovered breeding on some South African bird islands. So they are very, very unusual. I wish I could handle ladies like that. <laughs> but I can't, you know. Aww. Whee! Oi! Off she goes. That's great. Okay, last one. And this bird that I'm holding could be 30 years of age. Just think of that, it could be 30 years old. For a bird this size, that is unbelievable. Seabirds live longer than land birds of comparative size. Albatrosses live to up to 60 to 70 years of age. Storm petrels, oldest known, is about a 36 year old bird. So just think of that. Petra is asking, will they find their way back? Absolutely, they'll find their way back. These birds know exactly where they are. They've got uh, the stars and so on. And we also think that that very, very good sense of smell they have allows them to actually detect differences in ocean salinity and smell. Just like salmon find their natal stream, these birds can find their islands in fog, a little island out in the middle of an ocean, unmarked around an ever-changing sea. So, tremendous birds. They look incredibly dainty and vulnerable but they are, without doubt, some of the long-distance migrants uh, that we have in, in seabirds. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>